Welcome, dear traders and investors, to today's webinar. Today, we're here to talk about how probability of profit works in options trading using demystifying technique. I am Vignesh, an influencer marketing expert at FIRES. Our company is a bootstrap startup that empowers 4 lakh plus clients to trade and invest seamlessly with us. This webinar was conducted earlier in October in Tamir, and we since then have received hundreds of requests from our viewers to conduct it in English again. So here we are one more time with our speaker, Mr. Rajashekaran Radhakrishnan. Rajashekaran sir, thank you for joining us once again today. So Rajashekaran is the founder of Trend Rooster Consultancy Private Limited and a, YouTube, uh, and a YouTuber who teaches directional systems, option models and adjustments to options. This webinar will provide you with the knowledge on how to comprehend the one ASD how to make the probability of profit work for trading, how to understand the option trader types, and a few other topics as well. We also have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So viewers watching this webinar on Zoom, please use the Q&A feature where you can ask your questions. Let's get started. So you guys can see me, right? Yes. Okay, then. Uh, thanks. Uh, let me share my screen. Um... So let me know once you see the screen. Uh, is it is it clear? It's visible. We can see your screen. Okay then. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Vignesh. Uh, Ms. That's what was nice, wonder, wonderful introduction. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Rajesh Ekren, and uh, thank once again thanks uh, for uh, flyers to give uh, flyers to give this uh, opportunity to present. My name is Rajesh Ekren. I'm a um, founder and director of managing director of Tentrols Consultancy. I'm a YouTuber, YouTuber and trader and trainer. Okay. So uh, today's uh, topic is to uh, demystifying the probability of profits. Okay, typically, uh, what is demystifying? Uh, the, if you have any questions, just to type it there in the chat. So I'll uh, I'll take a questions uh, while along with the presentation. So whenever you have a question, just type it there. I'll uh, take a questions there. Okay. So let's uh, let's go on to the next uh, slide. Uh, legal disclaimer. Uh, just I'll pause it for a few seconds, then I'll move on it. All right. Today's agenda is to uh, find out the uh, you know uh, number of types of options trading. Okay. So earlier, you know, before starting the session, uh, there are a few members actually chatting with me in uh, uh, Zoom chat that is it option selling or option buying? Okay. That was the major. Uh, uh, topic uh, most of them are Twitter or in any social media. The whether you are option seller or option buyer. Okay, actually it's not options have so many options. Okay, so you have a, you have to understand that option is not just a single asset like where you can buy or sell. Okay, so if you are looking for option trader, there are varieties of option trader. So volatility option trader, option profile trader, gamma scalper, long only optional trader, long only option scalper. And then profile hedge option trader. Okay, so there are much more varieties. I just uh, added only few list here. Okay, uh, probability of profits. We're going to deep dive into this topic and then explaining the demystifying the some of the one SD concepts. Okay, this even I have tutored this concept. So do you guys know this? All these methods are uh, any any of them are familiar with this? Any of these methods? I mean, I'm expecting some uh, some kind of comments in there. So, no, okay. Yeah, this is uh, predominantly a few people know and few people uh, many, predominantly know, many of them don't know any of this, right? Right. So volatility options trader, okay. So what is volatility options trader? Uh, so basically they look for event driven strategies. So what are the events like elections, uh, uh, budget day, uh, some kind of uh, quarterly results. These are actually events for the specific assets where we wanted to uh, crush the volatility and make out of the profit of the premiums. Okay, quarterly result, even the budget. This, but this I took this software from uh, Fox Trading. Okay, if you look at this uh, this section there, uh, you you will see the theoretical prices and then probable uh, theoretical prices with the current prices. 
So theoretical prices, it says uh, 257 rupees. And uh, is it voice is low? Uh, someone is pointing that what my voice is low. Is it audible? You are audible, sir. Loud and clear. Great, great. If you look at here, this is theoretical price and this is a current price. When you are uh, when you are looking for volatility crested, this kind of uh, tools will help you to, you know, find uh, where the arbitrage opportunities or it's kind of shorting opportunities. Basically, theoretical value is this much, but it's been inflated such a volatility so that you can short off any of the strikes. So based on your uh, you know risk tolerance, you can find the uh, strike and then you can short it with the hedge, right? This is how typically volatility traders goes. So have you seen this kind of uh, analysis anywhere? You can find this anywhere, any uh, tools. This is something I captured from a Fox Trader. Fox Trader, it's available in India, okay? Okay, what is next? Let's go to uh, next is option profile trading. We at the Rooster predominantly uh, focus on option profile trading. I'll, uh, I'll explain later on why we focus on this. This is actually a business. So income-based strategies, whether it is a weekly or bi-weekly or monthly or bi-monthly, quarterly or yearly. And it's a purely probability-based trade setup. So basically market is somewhere around 18,000 or 17,700. We cover this, do you see this uh, kind of borderline, which is a one standard deviation? We map the profile closer to one standard deviation, okay? So which means by entering the trade itself, we have 68% probabilities. Let me cover this uh, aspect so later, but just I wanted to cover up the option profile trader. And uh, next type of trader, typically long only personal traders. Uh, so what are the types? So instead of buying a stock, so they wanted to take a leverage out of it and then just, just to buy it. So example, uh, MR, of, MR of stocks, are uh, it's a huge price. Nestle is huge price. If you are finding it that uh, stocks are going to go above in speculative manner, you can buy a stock, buy a option, a call option or put option, depends on the direction. You can buy it with a tiny price, right? That's a leveraged price, okay? Option is a leveraged positions. You understand that, right? That's a very basic. Option is not one-to-one. -one. It's a leveraged position. okay? So what are the types of uh, long-only options traders are available? So swing trading, BTST, uh, based on chart pattern data that you collect and then you come up with the, whether it is a long-only or it's a, create a com some kind of spreads that you can you know, trade with it. So the, this is what is exactly, you know, long-only positional traders. Let's leave it there. And, uh, you know, just I gave a glimpse. I wanted to look at this profile, I mean, uh, look at this picture, and I took this picture from a business insider, okay? Uh, I give a credit to them. Okay, look, what do you see from this picture? What do you see from these pictures? Large scope, okay. Um, Warren Buffett playing TT, that's all I know, yeah. Being more safe. Uh, risk, large support, better choice to win, effort. Little more, guys, little more, because this uh, this picture is a uh, thousand words worth. Long time investing, probability of winning, bigger space to hit, okay, retailer versus large player. Uh, All right, so a few of them are uh, catched uh, wrongly, but uh, I wanted to give you another dimension and perspective of this picture. Sure shot was, <laughs> okay, I wanted to give, so there is no sure shot in the market, okay? If someone says then just run away, okay? There is no sure shot in the market. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's complete this uh, left side picture. It's Warren Buffett is playing table tennis, that's a, but look at this curve that is very so proficient in this, uh, trading with the uh, table tennis, which means it's so proficient. It's been, uh, it's been playing with the table tennis and he can able to hit with the small bat with the small, uh, you know, uh, ball, right? Which means is that he had a lot of experience being practicing multiple years. Then he able to achieve this wonderful 
uh, with the small tools, uh, with the small capital, so that he can play around with it. So the same Warren Buffett is playing here, which means it's maybe a, a novice at the time of the you know starting it, where he's playing with a bigger bat so that he can hit the ball, which means he need to bring a bigger capital. And in order to play safer zone to play it. Okay, most of them are actually answered correctly. So did you get the picture now? All right. So basically that bat is something like a capital that uh, you bring. Okay, so most of the retailers, uh, I would say all of the retailers, they start with the pro so they start with the option trading or any other trading with this very, very small capital. Adequate capital is very important in any other business. Do you agree with this? Adequate, if you don't have a ca adequate capital, you cannot win this in any, any business. Now forget about stock market. You cannot win this any other game. Okay, this is the first demystifying that I wanted to point out. The very first demystifying adequate capital is required. That I want to demystify it, okay? So if you are, a, say example, you are bringing a very small capital and you have to be a pro, super pro in a professional that so that you can use small capital to hit the ball. Otherwise you cannot get it. What is adequate? It depends on the model that you trade, uh, Mr. Masood. Say example, pro profile trading that we predominantly trade in every month. So which is a minimum 15 lakhs is required to trade. If you are an equity investor, equity trader, something like 5 lakh to start with it. So depends on the trading style where you have, you need to have adequate capital, right? Say uh, intraday people try to do uh, selling or buying or they just, just come up with, you know, 15,000 rupees, 50,000 rupees, just 1 lakh rupees, starting with the very less capital and they're betting with the speculations, right? Have you heard about an uh, article or uh, saying that the biggest loss, forget about uh, 2020, uh, 2020, you know, disaster of, you know, falling the market and uh, as upper, upper, sorry, lower circuit hit. You know, what is the biggest loss in the entire stock market? This is the second uh, demystifying that I wanted to mention. Do you know what is the second, I mean, the biggest loss in the stock market people make? Now, people always say that it's uh, if you are sort of upper circuit or lower circuit, if you are having the stock in short, then uh, you will be losing it, right? What is the biggest loss? Emotional loss, not investing. Okay, that's all secondary. Yeah, some of them are getting it. What is the biggest loss? If you, if you take the any history, okay, if you take the any history of the stock market, starting from uh, beginning, okay, uh, biggest loss is, Speculation bet. You know how many people uh, in the speculation bet people are losing the game, losing the game. Do you know difference between speculation and a gambler? Okay, there is a very thin line of uh, gambler and speculator bit. Speculator. If I have a time, then I will explain later on. But uh, I. I really, I'm really interested to explain as gambler and a speculator. Okay, so the biggest uh, losing in any stock, any stock market and the stock market in the entire history, those who are doing speculation are lost. Uh, Vijay, I try to. Uh, uh, I'm not accepting right now because there, there is a fact that, you know, research scholarly article also says that, uh, you know, speculation bed are not working. Even our uh, our zero the CEO, Nitin Kamath says it's only one percentage of the um, uh, traders are beating the FD return. And uh, if you look at any other uh, business, I mean, not any other business, the entire stock market, most of the speculator, bed, uh, speculator betting guys are losers, okay? Unless you are a investors, you will win the game. If you are a speculative traders, typically you will lose the game, okay? Unless you have a, a concrete system in your place and money management and portion size, then you have at least a survival in this game. Otherwise you don't. Okay, so the biggest loss, so think about this entire era here, how many people lost? This entire 2020, uh, 2022, there is no much of, you know, lower circuit and upper circuit in this, in this entire year so far. 
okay i have not seen it so far unless you know uh, unless there is a february 24th there was a nsc glitch they stopped working on 1120 then opened it's almost upper circuit level but after that i don't see any upper circuit lower circuit maybe those who last in that upper circuit lower circuit is very less amount but when you compare it every day every minute basis every day every month every week there are more and more people are lost money in the speculating bit okay do you get it so this is a second uh, my uh, demystifying that one is the you need a adequate capital the second one is so speculation bit it's not for longer run you understand so far shall i go on next slide okay probability of profit if you have seen it in options so people talk about pop have we heard about this terminology pop probability of profit and there is a calculation i took this you know calculations from a tasty trade website so i gave a credit this is a source okay it's not that i cooked up it's been available in the internet i just uh, I took from them and this is a credit okay yeah a speculation and gambler i will try to explain uh, end of this presentation because that's not part of the scope but i wanted to explain to you uh, just allow me to complete this presentation and if if we have a time then i'll definitely explain you the uh, gambler versus uh, uh, speculation okay because uh, someone have to be demystified right because uh, everyone is thinking that the market will go up or down everything it's basically a gambling let's see let's complete this okay this is a probability of profit i'm not going to this it's available internet okay blah 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 okay everyone have seen it option chain uh, option chain right okay so this is a option chain do you know why this is first of all option chain is uh, it's a yellow color and this side is a yellow color because this is a in the money right the in the money is been colored a slightly kind of goldish yellow is color am i right or wrong do you know why you guys are already seeing do you know why why it is not gray why it is yellowish why it is not pinkish why it is not because this color is been codified i mean it's iso standard okay all other exchanges any other exchanges have to you know uh, i know it is a, because this color is been in, in the money why this color particular color because this color is been coded it's a coded for the goldish or yellow color for iso standard okay so in the money supposed to be shown in the option chain as a goldish yellow color you get it this is a new information if you are if you are not familiar with the standard and the call supposed to be left side and the put supposed to be right side this is also iso standard okay so you see you open an australian exchange or singapore exchange or us exchange canadian exchange you open asx any japanese exchange narita any any other exchange always option chain is so in the money will be golden color and the call side will be the left side and put side will be the right side this is because of the iso standard everyone have to follow it okay if you don't know this is a this is it this is a behind the scene okay okay let's move into the uh, topic do you see that uh, people uh, you know typically say that if you just go there they basically market is somewhere around 17600 and if at all i go there i pick somewhere around 17200 if i just click there and uh, this is maybe 0.2 delta so what is it at the money delta just type it there instead of going to some other delta what is it at the money delta 0.5 0.5 yes perfect 50 delta or 0.5 delta whatever way you are conveniently saying that's all correct if i just go and put the, and say far away maybe 17200 it could be for 0.3 or 0.2 delta am i right so what is the typical uh, people will say what is the typical people will say if i if they just short the 17200 what the typical people will say means i have shorted they say in the twitter or social media they posted i have shorted for 17200 and point to delta so which means i have a 80% probability am i right or wrong this is what you have been seeing right 
Now we're not saying that kind of Twitter thread or uh, some people are posting in a blog or YouTube saying that point to Delta, you have to say you have an 80% probability. Uh, if you do it and uh, add the money, you have 50% probability. Am I right or wrong? All right. <clears throat> Yeah, but that's actually absolutely wrong. And uh, spot movement, 100 percentage, okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, option is a derivative data, which means uh, option is a third derivative, sorry, second derivative. Uh, future is derivative of spot, which is a cash market. And then option is derived from where? Future, right? Everybody knows this, right? Okay, so I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to explain how this probability of profit has been uh, loosely terms used. How do we can, you know, concrete manner used? How I want to demystify this. Okay, so seventy percentage pop. This is what typically people will say. Uh, at any point of the given, at this time, at the time of the day, at the time of the volatility, it is seventy percentage. The moment that person is, uh, you know, just uh, sold or bought, it's uh, he has a. Uh, if it is a sold, a 70% probability. If it is a bought, which means only 30% probability, right? So that is given at the, at the time of the at the time of the market. It's not because the standard deviation, the price, it's keep on fluctuating it. They say you sold at the 0.3 delta. It is that at the moment of only at the moment, maybe at the minute or two minutes. After five minutes, you know, hundred points move, then they they no longer is. Uh, so no longer is, you know, uh, you would see that it's a 30% probability. It, it could be, you know, uh, it, it could be 60% probability. It could be 50% probability. It becomes at the money, right? Market moves it within a one day or within a few hours. So where is your 70% probability? So the probability of profit is not for constant. It's a dynamic. First, first someone have to understand it. So you need to have a plan A, plan B for it. When the moment you sell it, Sell it, as so example, 70% probability. That probability is only available at the given time, the given point of the time, right? Is it clear so far? Do you understand the point? So the probability of profit is not concrete. It moves as it is. When the market moves, the probability of profit will collapse. And the market is not going to stay as it is, right? Every day there is a fluctuation, every day it moves, every minute moves, every hour moves, every day moves, right? Every week moves. Then you come out, uh, some people uh, will come out and say that I sold a 70% probability so that I have a probability of profit in winning in 70%. No, it's totally wrong. There is no 70% probability. You sold out of the money, that's all. And you have to watch it and modify it, take a stop loss or adjust. You have to do it. You have to play, you have, Sorry, you have to have a plan B and plan C for it. The moment you take the trade, you should not be walk away. I have a 70% probability. I have a 80% probability. I have a 100% probability. There is no 100% probability. Then the probability of profit is just for the minute. After that, the probability profit, it goes away. Is that clear? Shall I go on to the next slide? All right. So law of large number. Okay, this is very much uh, interesting model, uh, which is uh, anyone comes to stock market uh, supposed to know this model. Okay, so the left hand side is actually it's supposed to be a swing, but this is PDF file. It, it won't swing right now. Law of large number states that conducting law of large number tails and sample result in a pro proportion that it close to the theoretical probability. Okay, don't get mad out of this kind of a distribution curve. I will explain individually individually now. So, for example, I will give you the uh, you know coin that uh, I will ask you to flip a ten times. Okay, uh, maybe thirty times or ten times. Okay, the first time, for example, uh, thirty trials. That guy is this, and he is getting around forty percentage head and uh, sixty percentage tail. The second time, the same thirty percent trial gave. And he got uh, say more than 75 per 67 percentage of the head he got it, and the rest of them are tail. 
So every time if he does with the 10, 30 times of trial, it's been the distribution is being keep on modifying. Do you see that the distribution is not center? It's either on the right, this left hand side or right hand side or center sometime and then keep on changing it. What is it indicating it? So when you have when you are looking for probability of profit, when you are looking at probability of profit and short number of trades, it's random. Do you understand now? When you are uh, when you are flipping the coin for ten times, it's always random. Either you see you get a eight times of head or four times of head or two times of head, right? Two times of head. So it won't be perfectly 50-50. Do you get the idea now? So the short times of spin you get always random. So okay, next slide. Let me explain to let next slide. This is the next slide, which has been uh, captured like one lakh trial, okay? Which means uh, it's a one lakh, yeah, it's a one lakh trial. When I do a one lakh trial with uh, with uh, randomness, screen is not visible. Okay, someone says screen is not visible. Okay then. All right, when you do a one lakh trial, do you see it is exactly 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 now, which is a 50% probability. When you do again the same flip on more than one lakh trial, you get you get almost exact 50% trial. So you get again, you do a number, any number of trial, you do more number of uh, spin, you always get the probability of profit, okay? What does that mean? The moment you start, let's go back to the previous one. Okay, so now let's go back to your previous one. I sold a 70 percentage probability of profit. Profit, which means what? The moment we, when I do the trade, it's one trade, it's a randomness. The same 70 percentage of probability trade, rinse and repeat if I do every week and every month, uh, every week, every month and every year, if I do it, I probably may have a 70 percent probability. Do you get it? Do you understand now? I just explained to you the concept of law of large number that a short number of spin is always a randomness. Even if you properly allocate this probability of profit, 70%, 80%, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's, a, it's always a randomness, isn't it? Am I right or wrong? If you do that more number of trading, a more number of spin on the same strategy, you will get the realistic of the the more probability, whatever you try to trade, the realistic probability will arrive, right? So now go, I'm going back to this option chain. If I'm tell, selling this again, 70% probability, uh, maybe call option or put option and selling it, rinse and repeat manner every week, every month, every year, every quarter, every, every year, if I do it, I probably have a 70% probability, right? I hope it is, uh, you know, this is a next level of demystifying. So the probability of profit is not going to work out only just just in you know, a delta minor. It is you have to swing it in more number of trades. Then only the probability of profit will achieve, will arrive. You get it? All right. So let's conclude this, uh, you know, probability of uh, in short term, single instance, 70% of probability trade will, uh, will give you random results. Okay. Probability of profit studies, statistics relies on more number of data sampling, which means more sa same types of trades. In order to achieve 70% prop, we have to rinse and repeat strategy daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, then only you able to achieve these same results. Okay. And one more thing I wanted to uh, add in this point, probably uh, if you are a system designer, strategy designer, or you want to design your own strategies, what do you, how many months you go and test? How many days you go and test? I just ask a question, just go ahead and type yourself. I'll be happy to uh, check the questions. I asked a question, so if at all you were uh, uh, checking the strategies, example, you're trading some day trading strategies, or swing trading strategies. Uh, how many trading samples you do? 
some people will say 50 and 50 and 90 days some people say two years uh, some people say ideally we should software testing across various instrument three years three months i back tested three years uh, one year all right uh, the answer is uh, uh, the one guy rightly mentioned it's there is no one perfect answer on these questions it's as much data as, as possible okay say example uh, you started testing only one year okay maybe that one year is exactly bull bull uh, bull year okay bull, uh, bullish month bullish year so your uh, strategy might have worked the moment you started it's become a very choppy because the market regime standard i mean started shifting it your uh, back testing uh, you know become uh, not reality and you're facing the issue, facing the losses all right right so if you try if you tested two years three years four years five years uh, data so there will be a uh, bearish year bullish year there will be rough patches so it the you train your model in all the scenarios you come up with still it's profitable then there is a probability that you make money in this uh, in the future also but the future is not guaranteed but there is a probability okay do you understand that so far so the back testing the three months back testing one year back testing six month back testing is not enough I'm not talking about any uh, automated uh, trading strategy back test. I'm talking about any strategies, whether you sell the 70 percent probability or 80 percent probability, you buy a long option based on super trend or uh, any other RSI indicator, whatever your strategy is may be. But when you try to, uh, when you try, always test as much as data as possible, because it's only few that a few you know. Uh, few years may have a different type of data sets you're training your model in only that particular uh, data sets which is not correct right okay let's move on to the next next topic so we have demystified a few things already and i hope you guys are learning it now let's come to standard deviation this has been fascinating for me when i started uh, option trading for a while okay standard deviation is it standard first of all it's not standard but though we call it as a standard deviation, right? It's funny, right? It's standard deviation, it's not standard, first of all. Is it market is standard deviation? Is it standard? No, right? So anyhow, as per standard deviation, because with this tool, we can you know come across, uh, we can channelize our strategies, okay? With this tool, okay, so 90, it tells you that how the how the spread of the data, it can be distributed this side or this side, it's all the way to here or there, okay? But when you cover to one standard deviation, which means what? If there is a high probability, that's 68% of probability. When you cover your strategies being uh, two standard deviation, that's 95% probability by theory, okay? By theory, but not by the market. And this is a formula. Again, I took this uh, formula screenshot from Tasty Trade. That's a credit, okay? Okay. So basically, this formula, the standard deviation formula in options is actually uh, derived from the few parameters. You know, what are the parameters? It's actually option black skull formula. And one of the formula is the uh, volatility. So you need to key in the volatility to make this uh, standard deviation curve, okay? So guys, tell me, is it volatility is a constant? So volatility is not at all constant, isn't it? So volatility not at all constant and you are using that non-constant variable to measure the standard deviation, right? That you have to understand first, okay? And also depends on the one standard deviation, that standard deviation, the moment you enter uh, some values, may, maybe you now VIX is somewhere trading 13 or 14, right? Suddenly VIX has become 20. This standard deviation has become this big, right? It's been expanding it. The standard deviation VIX has been uh, reducing it. The standard deviation has been shrink it, shrink to small. And uh, once uh, you know standard deviation, you know, the VIX is keep, keep on increasing, the standard deviation keep on increasing it. So it contract and shrink, okay? It's expands and then shrink. You get it? Based on the volatility. So the volatility is a constant, it's not constant variable, it's a dynamic variable, okay? 
So options have this, you know, uh, main thing is a delta is a directional. So this is a one standard deviation. Market is tomorrow opening a gap up somewhere around 100 points above. That standard deviation is not going to be here. It is moved to that price and then it shows the value, right? So uh, the standard deviation moves along with the price. Am I right or wrong? It's not constant. Sir, uh, Raj, I saw this uh, standard deviation. It was pointing out a sounding thousand eight hundred. Now it is pointing out eight hundred as a midpoint, which means the uh, standard deviation moves. So first, you have to understand the standard deviation moves along with the price. That's the first variable. Okay. The second variable, which I already explained it, uh, already explained the volatility. Based on the volatility, it is expands and then shrink. Okay. And then theta decay, the moment it goes from the day, day of expiry, it has been expanding, 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 and shrinking to the one standard deviation. Okay. So there is three variables which is not part of your any uh, standard. Okay. First of all, standard deviation has these many variables. So one SD uses IV to uh, day to expiry to calculate the expected boundary. That's what I mean, mean it here. So what we understand from the standard deviation when you try to model it, the standard deviation. That one side measures the current delta, current delta, volatility, and DT. Okay. If any of the above parameter changes, one day, one SD will change. Following one SD throughout the life cycle. What I mean throughout the life cycle, say you started with one side, maybe uh, iron condor or something, some strategy. That is that you're covering with the one standard deviation. So, which means on the day, on the time that one standard deviation is covered. Okay. Next day, if the market shifted to 100 points away, then you need to map this uh, profile, you know, map the profile, uh, uh, I encounter to the match the one standard deviation. So that you keep on, uh, you keep on maintaining that 68% probability. You understand what I'm trying to say? Earlier, we saw that in a, in a law of large number, when you keep on rinse and repeat, you do that, you probably in a higher number of spin, you, you obtain that uh, real performance or real uh, probability, right? So now, once and based on one standard deviation theory, and uh, you just, not just mapping it, once one the moment you once you map it, one iron condor, one standard deviation, next day it is going to shift it by the delta, Based on maybe in today is 17,700, tomorrow is 18,000, tomorrow 18,200, then you need to shift this your iron condor to the map to the one standard deviation. So now today is also your, uh, your profile is your uh, profile. What I mean is the iron condor. Okay. The iron condor is now a 68% probability. So if you maintain your iron condor throughout the life cycle uh, of, you know, whenever the till profit get, so you have a 68% probability, which is almost 70 percentage, right? This is how we have to maintain it. In order to maintain the option trade, one must, one must learn option adjustments, okay? This is another way. Many people know, know starting the trade with iron condor, but nobody knows how to adjust the trade. Many of them, I would say, but not everyone, but few people know how to adjust it, how to maintain the profile, but many of them don't know, right? that require adequate capital. Is that clear? This is the conclusion of honesty. Uh, adjustment is not part of the, this is only demystifying. If I go to adjustment, that is become a strategies. Okay. Okay, so how many demystifying we did so far? First, we need to be demystified that <clears throat> so we can hold. Okay, yep, yes, yes, correct. So, first demystifying we did that uh, speculation bets are the highest loser in any stock market history. Okay, so whether it is uh, there is a highly uh, uh, scholarly article I've read it somewhere. If I find it, I will share it. But uh, there is a highly you know uh, researched scholarly article says that speculation bets are. Those who are trying to speculate, but unless you are a, a proper system, proper risk management, position size, and you are also a long-time investor, then probably uh, you are a winner. And if, if at all you are doing it for intraday, and if you are uh, doing it for just for pleasure and seeing some pattern, something, uh, seeing it and, and jump into the market and just bought it, some call options, some put options, then 
you probably end up in loose uh, loser in a longer longer uh, time period of the time okay and the second one we just demystified that the lesser adequate capital is very important you need to bring more capital uh, in order to in order to sustain in this game okay and uh, if you are bringing a less capital then you cannot pro pro play with the probability of profit because your capital is very low you do not uh, have a ability to adjust your profile yeah, profile i mean the iron condor or iron butterfly or whatever the strategies that you play you may not have adequate capital to adjust it then you end up in loss right taking a stop loss and say example some people will say so i created a bull call spread uh, i have a view in uh, upside uh, i took a bull call spread and market uh, reversed it i took a stop loss so if you do that keep on repeat and repeat how many times you can able to have a view proper view and even create a bull call spread and then make a money out of it 50 50 right 50 50 chance if you rinse and repeat if you keep on do it you end up losing the entire capital speculation bets are highly dangerous on longer run okay unless you are a proper personal trader and investors probability of profit i explained it that 70 percentage of delta if you sell it it's only for the time of the <coughs> sorry only at the time of the uh, day at the time of the minute is a 70 percent probability and because the market keep on shifting it and uh, your probability of profit is not no longer works okay and the second law of large number we saw the less number of uh, trials if you do it uh, testing or it's uh, you're doing it less number say that you know that it's 70 percent probability but the last two trades is making loss that doesn't mean it's lost the 70 percent probability you have to give a chance of more number of trades if you are not willing to trade in real money then trade paper trade make sure that uh, strategy works on on forward testing uh, 70 percent probability then deploy it you get the idea so this is one of the demystifying concept and this is a model basically law of large number is a model and with that model we just explained that even if we have 70 percent 60 percent or 80 percent probability of model the very next trade is completely random am i right or wrong so tomorrow you are buying your 80 percent probability of model it says the buys a buying trigger so you are buying that call option or something which is a you get 80 percent probability that no right on a longer range of the period, number of trades, you get 80%. The very next trade is completely random. Am I right or wrong? Are you guys there? Uh, now let's come back to the uh, you know standard deviation. Standard deviation. Standard deviation is, uh, I said that though it is a called a standard deviation, and the parameters used are all of them are dynamics. Okay, the, because of the dynamics in nature, all these things are dynamic. So it is expands, contract, and moves, shrink, and then decays. Everything happens. The standard deviation keeps on moves. So in order to in order to map your uh, iron condor, you, you need to ma maintain the one standard deviation wherever it goes it's like a hutch dog used to be it follows right so you need to map the uh, iron condor to the one standard deviation to get the 70 percent probability okay that is the explanation and one more thing i wanted to explain explain here okay uh, data so based on the chart data okay chart is somewhat is uh, predictable the past chart pattern somewhat is replicable based on that the data most of them are using option data am i right around Come on, guys, just uh, type it there. Are you guys are using option uh, intrinsic uh, OAI, cumulative delta, some kind of data? Are you guys are using it? Okay. Some people said, some, yes, some people know, or some people said price action, that's good. Okay. Uh, majority of them are actually right now, these days actually using a uh, and a super uh, uh, derivatives of data. Okay. Data, what is the derivative data? Option is, first of all, uh, what is the derivative? Option is a second derivative. Did I tell you that earlier? Did I mention it? I think I saw. Yeah. Uh, future is the first uh, derivative, and option is derived from 
uh, option is derived from future. Am I right or wrong? So it's uh, already option is a second derivative. Okay. Uh, what is what do you mean wrong? Option is already a second derivative. Option is not directly calculated from the spot price. Option is always derived from the future volatility. Okay. So if you are not sure, then go ahead and check out the basics. Okay. Okay. Now you have an option chain, and uh, and option chain and the data uh, that your the premiums are fine. Okay. That is a, and from the premium that open interest and then PCR values and the cumulative deltas. How many derivatives you go? That would be become a fourth derivative or fifth derivatives. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So the PCR data are uh, you know the the OA cumulative data that are you are measuring trying to measure that is actually fifth derivative is a original asset. Say you are trying to measure Tata Steel, okay? That is how it is supposed to be, but it is supposed to be future, okay? And go ahead and check it out yourselves. Um, so the spot spot is the original asset, and future is a second asset derivative asset. Option is a third, I mean second derivative asset, and then option price. The option price is there, and then you are derivating from the option price. Option price and the OA you are plotting it along with the cumulative delta calculating that could be you know third or fourth derivative. So from the fourth derivative you are trying to uh, find out the leading asset of the spot price, right? Uh, this is doesn't make sense to uh, many people because derivative you use the derivative data as a one of the confirmation confirmation method, okay? Not as a primary method. You use a price action or all other patterns. But use the derivative data as a one of the confirmation method, as a conclusion, right? But do not just just rely on option, you know, tools like uh, there are so many option tools, you know, option uh, analytical tools that just to forecasting that I, I am able to predict uh, derivative data of derivative data data of derivative, right? So that no way it is possible. So let me ask the question in a simpler manner. Derivatives of derivatives of derivative equal to zero, right? No? What do you mean no? Derivatives of derivatives of derivative fall to at least five to six derivatives. If you go, if you put all the derivatives, it becomes zero, right? It doesn't ring a bell yet. Okay. I, okay. Uh, maybe. Uh, how does derivative data help? <laughs> okay. That all I'll leave it to it. I, I'm here to demystifying the techniques. Uh, demystifying the most of the stuff that have been uh, circulating in the, you know uh, social media or in the training uh, in a workshop, people are trying to use this kind of uh, tools that I want to demystify to educate the people that you supposed to follow in proper manner so that your accounts will be, uh, uh, will not be wiped out, okay? Clear? Now we have at least a few minutes. Uh, at least, uh, guys, uh, do we have a few minutes uh, so that I can explain the, you know, uh, Gambler gambling with uh, speculative. Do we have a time? We have a few minutes. So we can go ahead. Okay. Uh, let me explain uh, gambling. Gambling with with, uh, with uh, speculative. Okay. You someone mentioned that earlier in the chat box. It said speculation is uh, technical, and uh, gambling is purely luck. Okay. Let me explain uh, one context which I know it because the one guy I know it uh, is actually used to bet in the horse, horse trade. Is anybody uh, traded horse riding and or horse trade, not horse riding, horse trade, race course, which is a pure gambling, right? We call them as a gambler, right? Those who are doing horse trading, uh, horse uh, trading and all what? 
horse race and all, it's typically it's a gambler, right? Okay, that guy, when I ask the guy, how you bet it? It's not random, guys. Uh, what he does it, okay, what he do, what he do in typical manner, he look at, there is, a, he, he used to uh, do in a bet in the Madras race, uh, race club, okay, which is a, used to be a Madras race club. There is a horse riding, uh, uh, you know, bet, uh, horse race course. So he used to bet there is a, uh, you know, uh, horse called Kalyani, okay, which uh, there is a, there is a the, there is a probability that Kalyani is uh, whenever comes to Kalyani comes to Madras Race Club, there is a probability of winning chance. Okay, that is a one pro type of probability. Then this guy also look which uh, column, uh, which gate that Kalyani opens and enter it. So that is a second level of probability. He will check it and then whether it is to bet it on the Kalyani or some other horse. Then he will check that which jackie, the stallion, uh, because the ride it, the stallion name is Kalyani, right? The horse name is Kalyani. And uh, which uh, jackie that runs the uh, horse, I mean, uh, on the day, I mean, uh, who run it. So it depends on that. He put another uh, statistical probability. Okay, this uh, this guy runs it. There, there is a high chance of probability win. Okay, then he add it. Then there is a, the moment he opens up the gate of the, uh, you know, the race, which whether it comes with the start with the, you know right leg or left leg depends on that there is a probability so he add all the checklist and then the probability is high then he will go and bet it does it ring the bell is it a te technical analysis it's not technical analysis then why do we call them as a gambler did you understand so far what i'm trying to explain here Was it not technical analysis? And why do we call them as a gambler then? So now you come to speculative bet that you are betting that it's a Tata Steel goes up or JSTW goes up. JSW goes up based on few parameters that you read and you are, uh, you may be a candlestick pattern, some kind of pattern it says. So you are a, you are a checklist, you know, con confirmation method that this is, this is happening, this is happening. Then there is a probability that uh, Tata still goes up. Okay. So that is how you are doing a probability and then you are entering the trade, right? That's the same thing that, uh, you know, that uh, my friend uh, used to do in a uh, uh, used to do in uh, you know hard trading where he has been uh, doing the similar technical analysis for the race course right the kalyani is uh, how many probability is winning in the uh, gindi madras race course gindi madras race course and who the stallion name and then which gate is opening uh, the, and which leg is starting with the first and who's riding the horse so he is putting the probability and then still is bidding it Right, that is also considered as a you know speculation. I mean, gambler. If that is a gambler, then whatever we do is almost 90 95 percentage is a gambling. Then, in a short term, if you do it, it's a gambling. Okay, in a longer term, in a larger scale, if you do it, it's not a gambling. Okay, I think I'm done. I hope I delivered some of the you know demystifying concept. The, this videos will be available in uh, fires youtube and you guys have to watch it multiple times to understand the key concept of demystifying it i've demystified at least something many of the uh, topics so far and then uh, with that i'll uh, leave leave the floor to vignesh and you guys can check out myself tenduster.org in website and uh, youtube is also available to youtube and slash tenduster i'll leave it to vignesh floor is yours Thank you so much, sir. This was yet another insightful session. Thank you for taking the time to answer the questions too. Uh, viewers, if you have any further questions or would like to hear more from uh, Rajasekharan, sir, do follow his YouTube page. That's Trend Rooster. Uh, the URL for that is youtube.com slash Trend Rooster. So one of the uh, person asked, how do we hedge the portfolio or mutual fund? This is another day topic, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we'll have to uh, schedule another webinar for that another time. Okay. Uh, the simplest manner, there is a delta hedging, there is a beta hedging. 
if you are looking for beta hedging then you can find a, a video in my youtube channel where how to hedge uh, your asset in a beta hedging okay there is a super concept simpler manner you can do it okay beta hedging delta hedging is a dynamic it's delta is not constant at least beta somehow is constant okay anything else any other questions Thank you. And uh, they already said, uh, God bless. Okay, then. <laughs> Good to go. <laughs> thanks. Lovely. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Fun. Lovely. Thank you so much, viewers. Uh, uh, so, by the way, I just wanted to communicate to you Christmas and the new year just around the corner. Have you decided what to give your love to your loved ones already? If not, let me make a suggestion. You can now gift shares and mutual funds to your friends and relatives, provided you have a DBED account with FIRES. The advantages of gifting stocks far outweigh the advantages of traditional gifting. So this Christmas, do something different. Gift your family and friends an asset that will benefit them in the long run. Check out the complete details in our blog. The link is in the chat box. Thanks again for joining us today. Remember to subscribe to the FIRES YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so you get alerted of all our webinars. Thank you once again, and I will see you on 23rd December in our next webinar.